Hello, welcome back. And today we're going to continue with the statement of cash flows. And uh, we're going to look into how to create a statement of cash flows using the indirect method. Um, the advantage of the indirect method is that we start with information from the balance sheet and the income statement. So the information is easily and readily available. The challenge of the indirect method is that it's more difficult to interpret. So again, we're going to go back to the template. So if you have not done so, pause the video and download the template and then we'll continue. See you back in a bit. So once you open the, temp the spreadsheet template, let's, move, let's click on the tab that says table 5.6. So again, you can um, go through different tabs using the left and right arrow. Make sure that you go to the cash flow indirect method. So, and part of the, the, this setup is very similar to what we have done with the direct method. So I'm gonna go over it a little bit quicker. Uh, so here, um, any cell that is highlighted in light blue are cells that you need to input formulas for. In this column, it says change in value, and the formula you're going to enter is you take the ending value minus the beginning value. So each account, um, we will do the same. So for short-term investment, again, we're going to start the formula with the equal sign, and the Ending value is located in the um, balance sheet. So we are looking, we're working with short term investments. So make sure that your equal sign is um, visible and you're ready to enter a formula. So let's go to the balance sheet and we find the short term investments. So we take the ending value, which is 2019 minus the beginning value. So now we have our formula. And we make sure that we finish the formula by pressing enter. So we have a balance sheet column B minus um, balance sheet column C. The next item is accounts receivable. Again, um, when you create your balance sheet and you create this change, Take a, take a moment to organize your work so that it makes copying a lot easier. So if you go to the balance sheet page, you will see that they are in the same order. So uh, short-term investments is followed by accounts receivable, followed by inventory, followed by supplies, followed by prepaid insurance, and followed by other current assets. So we know that all this is in the same order. And because of that, I will be able to simply copy this. So again, I'm going to use the shortcut key. So you can use the control key plus C. So control C. And then you can hold down the shift key and the down arrow key. So you do however many times there are. And then to paste is control V. So using the shortcut key will make it a lot faster and make it easier to control your mouse movement. So go ahead and pause the video now. I'm going to ask you to complete the do the same thing for current liability and fi fixed assets, as well as long-term liability. Pause the video, and when you finish with these sections, current liability, fixed assets, and long-term liability, come on back and we'll check your work. Hi, welcome back. So I'm going to ask you to take one moment to check that your numbers are the same as mine. If not, then pause again and check and see if you are where the mistakes are. So I'm going to kick on the first formula so you can take a look at how they are the same or different. Um, the one item that is that is different from fixed assets and current versus current assets and current liabilities, we have a total for those. So we'll need to sum this up. So the formula will be just to sum up the individual items. The same thing is here. So, so this column represents the change in value for the year in each balance sheet item. We could have lived this uh, the way it is and used this in creating our statement of cash flows. I added an additional column. This is more for a teaching purpose rather than a necessary step. Uh, while you are learning um, the statement of cash flows, it may not be obvious or you may not remember whether um, 
an increase in current asset is a use or, or uh, an outflow or an inflow. So um, I created this additional column to make to make it more obvious uh, whether or not a particular cash flow is an inflow or an outflow. So the rule of thumb is that an increase in asset is an outflow because you need to use cash to um, buy asset. An increase in liability is an inflow because when you borrow money, that means you get cash. Uh, a reduction in asset is an inflow because you're selling off asset. A reduction in liability is an outflow because a reduction in liability means that you're paying off your debt. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and compute um, and and, and uh, determine which of these items is an outflow or an inflow. Now, the first item is easy, is zero. So it's neither an outflow or an inflow, so it's unimportant for the sign. So here we'll just say equal. So that makes it say uh, it doesn't change. Here we have an increase in asset, right? So the asset went up by $4,100. So an increase in asset is an inflow. So we need to, again, we use the equal sign. We put a negative negative sign in front of it and then click on the cell that contains the value. So what we are saying is that because accounts receivable went up by $4,100, we have an outflow cash of $4,100. So this is uh, the negative signs again, because inventory, it went down, which means we have an inflow. So the same is true for supplies insurance and other assets so in other words the cash flow sign is the opposite of the change in value once you understand the relationship you can copy this down so we can use the copy function for liability the change in value has the same sign as the cash flow an increase in liability is an inflow so we, we don't need to put a negative sign is the same so we just need to carry that over. And then for asset, again, asset has a negative or opposite sign for cash flow versus uh, change in value. So $21,000, if you remember the example, this is the um, additional truck that the company bought. So this is an increase in asset, which means we spend $21,000. $21, so that's an outflow. Liability will have the same sign. We have a reduction in $27,500, which means that we pay down our liability by $27,500. I want to emphasize that this step, what we just did, um, is not necessary for creating the uh, statement of cash flow. The reason I include that is as an additional exercise to reinforce the concept of Inflow versus outflow, and how are they related to changes in value in asset versus changes in value in liabilities? Okay, now we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna construct the statement of cash flow. So when I create this template, I have already looked at the changes in liability and changes in current asset. And I created this template based on the value that we have computed earlier on. So if you're creating this template on your own, you need to do this. Um, so again, notice that um, increase in liability is an info, so I'm adding those. Decrease in asset is also an info, so I'm adding that. Increase in asset is an outflow, so we are subtracting that. Increase in asset supplies is an outflow. Again, we are subtract, subtracting that. Decrease in liability is an outflow, so we are subtracting that. So that's how the change in value and the, uh, and the account type is con connected to uh, cash info versus cash outflow. All right, let's go ahead and create this statement of cash flow. So the first item is net income, and net income uh, is located in the income statement. So again, we're going to reference that. Referencing means we're going to start with the equal sign, and then we're going to go to the uh, income statement. And uh, income statement, scroll down, you'll find net income. So once you have identified the right cell, press Enter. 
So we bring in net income. The next item is depreciation. So we say equal. Again, depreciation comes from the income statement. So we're going to go to the income statement and we'll find depreciation. So identify the cell and then press enter. So we have brought in net income and depreciation. Increase in accounts payable. So we already computed this earlier, so we can use the equal sign and we can scroll up. So we're going to look for accounts payable. So here we go, accounts payable. And then current liability. So that's taxes payable. So again, we're going to go up and find taxes payable. And then decrease in current assets. So we're going to look for um, change in current asset, which is inventory. And this one is tricky. So you want it to be an inflow versus an outflow. So this will be an inflow. So you want to pick up the uh, $1,400. Uh, and decrease in other assets. So again, that is $150. Again, that is an info. Okay, the next step can be a little bit confusing. So it depends on your company policy. Um, the important thing is to be consistent. So if you include a negative sign, which is the less sign, meaning subtract, in the value, then when you compute the total, you'll be summing up all the numbers. If you show this number as a positive number, then in your formula for computing the total, you have to add up the, uh, the additions and then subtract the cash outflows. To make things more uh, clear, I'm going to use the policy or the approach of including the sign in the cash flows themselves. So increase in current asset or increase in accounts receivable, that's the cash outflow. So I'm going to pick it up here. And increase in supply, again, that is the cash outflow. Supply is $200 and decrease in current liability. Again, I'm going to pick that up as an outflow. So that is wages payable. Because I'm showing inflow as positive and outflow as negative, to compute my net cash flow, I just sum up, add up the entire set of values. So I'm summing up all the items. So again, um, I repeat, if you include a sign in your cash flow, you just need to sum up the entire column. If you put this in as positive number, then you need to add up the cash outflow, uh, cash inflows and subtract the cash outflows. And we do similar things here. So in terms of sales of fixed assets, we don't have any, but we do have purchase of equipment. And that is a cash outflow of $21,000. So the net cash flow from the investing activity is minus $21,000. Net new borrowing, again, we didn't have any new borrowing, but we did repay our mortgage. So we paid down $27,500 in mortgage. Again, we can add that up. So this, our, this is our net cash flow from financing activities. And then finally, we will... Um, come up with the new cash balance. So this is our net change in cash. Net change in cash is equal to the same as before. We take the net cash from operation, add to it any cash from investing activity, and add to it any cash from financing activity. So we have a net cash flow of, a net change in cash of $220. Now to find our cash balance, we need to bring um, the cash balance in the beginning and that comes from the balance sheet so we start with the equal sign again we're going to scroll to the balance sheet this is the beginning balance so remember beginning balance is the second column so our beginning cash balance is 2850 we press enter the net change in cash that's what we just computed above so equals so pick up the cell that contains the 220 
our net cash balance will be the beginning balance plus the change so that's our net cash balance and you notice that you match exactly what we have um, computed in the balance sheet and it's the same as what we have computed under the direct method so if you look at the cash flow from the direct indirect method and if you look at the cash flow from the direct method the total is the same so the cash flow from operating activity is the same and the net cash balance is the same so regardless of the format it should give you the same ending cash balance. However, the information is different. So for the direct method, you see where the cash come from. So the cash from customers, where the cash went, it went to pay suppliers um, and other activities. So it's very clear where the cash came from and where it went. Um, on the other hand, if you go to the indirect method that we just computed, the formula is a lot easier. It just changes in the current accounts, um, meaning current liability and current asset account. But it's not clear where where was cash generated um, and where was cash used. So that's the main distinction between the direct method and the indirect method. We'll stop this video now. Um, and if you are watching the um, lecture notes, we will return to the um, PowerPoints. If you're doing homework, um, this complete the discussion of the um, statement of cash flows. See you soon.